Amen. Now, um, the Lord Jehovah spoke with me this past night. Well, uh, the Lord Jehovah spoke with me this past night. And uh, in this past night, the Lord Jehovah, he presented the beast, the beast of revelation on my left-hand side. So he was on my left. And he asked me to look there and see. And so I saw the beast of revelation, the beast that comes from the earth. And the Lord drew me so close, I could see his facial and everything, the many heads, and even the far everything, I saw greater detail of the beast that comes from the earth. And then after that, the Lord Jehovah set me up with a beast, and I had a weapon in my hand that the Lord gave me, and I struck him, so the Lord led me to attack him, to strike him. And then a conflict ensued, a very serious conflict uh, developed and ensued. And in fact, I think I crushed his teeth to some point. So there was a very serious clash that took place. And then I woke up. Now, it has been for some time now that the Lord, the God of Israel, has been speaking with me and setting me up in many, many dreams now, setting me up with these beasts, the beasts of Revelation, and setting me up to clash with them. And that is the message I wanted to bring to the church. And I say it very clearly now, since my network is very clear now, I can open this up. Very, very important for the church. I say this conversation belongs to the dispensation after the rapture, after the gathering up of the saints and taking them into the safety of heaven. And I say that for those believers, the Christian believers, that are walking in righteousness, pursuing righteousness now, walking in holiness, pursuing holiness now, those who are steadfast unto repentance and the fear of God, which is wisdom, the wise church, the wise virgins, the wise church, they need not worry so much about this conversation because this conversation takes place when the church has been taken the Holy Church has been taken up into the safety of heaven. And I say it, that the church that will go into eternity, into heaven soon, needs to know are the following few points. I say point number one, you can see very clearly that the Lord Jehovah is right now switched gears. He has shifted gears. And there is a prophetic acceleration. Everybody, even the children, can now see that there is a prophetic acceleration ongoing right now. And the Lord is saying that in this prophetic acceleration that you are seeing now, you are witnessing now, you see very clearly that it is now takes place about the dispensation after the rapture. And that tells you that the coming of the Messiah is around the corner here. Again, that tells you that the coming of the Messiah is around. And that to the church that is pursuing righteousness and holiness is in so far as the preparing of the government for entry into eternity is concerned. And so the Lord is telling the nations of the earth, Asia, Europe, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Tasmania, the islands, South America, Central America, North America, the other islands on the other side. He is speaking all the nations of the earth. And he's saying three major important things to those that care about entry into the kingdom of God. He's saying that considering that now he is mostly accelerated and focused on the conversation beyond the rapture, tells you that the coming of the Messiah has gone nigh, is very near. The coming of the Messiah is at hand. And that tells you that it's a signal, it's a cue to the present day believer. 
Messiah. So it talks about time. Number two, it also talks about then the quality of that Christianity of preparation that we should should throw up at this hour, should manifest at this hour, should realize at this hour. And he's saying that now, if it be that the coming of the Messiah is near, then now the church has to focus on the quality of our Christianity. And that quality is well spelled out in the Bible. It says, a bride that is mature, a righteous bride, a bride that is wise, meaning is in the fear of God, in right standing with God, without spot, without wrinkle, without stain. The garment is the garment you see on, in Revelation chapter 19, verses 6 to verse 9. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Lino fino, resplandeciente y limpio. Or in Portuguese, limpo finissimo, resplandeciente y limpio. Finest linen, bright and clean. Those two aspects, the church is being focused in this conversation. That if the coming of the Messiah is so near, that the Lord is now talking about the dispensation after the church is snatched away. Then the church that is going to heaven, that has been prepared, like the Kenyan church, that cares so much about eternity, wherever you are, you must now focus on those two aspects. The time aspect, temporal, and the quality aspect. To make sure that you are without sin, without wrinkle, without spot, wise, fear of God, holy. All these things in the Bible. And the other most important thing is that when I looked at the beast that comes from the earth on my right hand side in this tremendous visitation this past night, when God the Father himself came and challenged me with a beast, the beast opened his mouth. He has so many heads, but one of them is the bigger head, the lion head. He opened his mouth and the teeth were very long teeth. He was opening the mouth to bite before I clashed with him. And I went and began to crush with him and crushed his teeth. And it was such a fight, a conflict you don't want to live on this earth to see. A monumental conflict you don't want to see with your eyes. And I said that there is a third aspect now, those teeth that the Lord showed me that I may come and tell you about. Those teeth are for devouring the church. Let me begin it here now. In the most other recent conversation, the Lord Jehovah, the God of Israel, had with me to bring to you the church. The Lord stood me at the sand of the seashores. And I saw the beast that came out of the sea. The beast that had a fatal wound on the head. And that wound was so fatal, the beast died. But resurrected and came out of the sea. And it is the dragon that called that beast out of the sea. Resurrected that beast out of the sea. There is a big teaching I will give the bishops, I say, in this land regarding the sea. What is the sea? Where does that beast come from? However, it's important to understand that when that beast is resurrected from the sea, the Bible says that all the people of the earth are wowed. There is so much shock and awe. They say, wow, who is like the beast? Who can do war with him? And they now, out of that resurrection, they have turned at that miracle and wonder. And the entire earth, the Bible says, the entire earth follows and worships the beast. And that beast is the Antichrist. And the one that called that beast out of the sea is the dragon, Satan himself. So you see now, Satan, the dragon, calls the beast using some satanic and demonic forces cause the beast that had the fatal wound on the head, but now live it again, cause the beast out, and the people of the earth are shocked. But when Jesus was resurrected from the, 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 the tombs, from resurrected from the cross, when 
when he died, the whole world rejected Jesus. Until today, only few follow him. And yet when the beast resurrects from the state who would resurrect from the sea, the whole world follows. That is tremendous, beloved people. It talks about the depravity of the moment, the vanity of the generation, the lost generation, the wicked generation that chooses to worship the beast. But anyhow, that beast from the sea, I gave you last time that conversation live on this radio, Jesus is Lord Radio, 105.3, 105.9 FM. But today, this other one, on my left hand side, is the beast from the land. The beast from the earth. And the beast from the earth is actually the false prophet. So you have the evil, wicked triunity, the triunity of evil. And I say Satan has no ideas of himself. Satan has to always mimic and counterfeit the law, the Lord God. Because right now, we have the Holy Trinity of God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we know that the Holy Spirit, at this hour, he dwells within the Holy Church. I mean the Holy Church. I mean the church that does not wear miniscus. The church that does not expose herself in tight trousers, tight skirts, tight jackets, tight what? I mean the church that is separated from the falsehood, false prophets, false apostles that you see right now reigning in the house of the Lord. The ones the Lord has sent me to slaughter, to bring down. The church that does, that does hearken to holiness, does hearken to righteousness, the Holy Church. That is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. And I say it, that when the Holy Spirit now dwells inside the church, the Holy Spirit dwells in the church. When the church is snatched away, the dispensation of the grace also comes to an end. Because the dwelling of the Holy Spirit has been taken away. That's why the light of Christ, the light of Christ is taken away. The church that is the light, the Holy Church, not the fallen church, the Holy Church is taken away. That's why in these dreams I see darkness. In this tremendous conversation, the vision I saw yesterday, there was darkness. The beast was in the darkness. In fact, the Lord had to draw me very close to the beast to identify him. So, the Holy Spirit is taken away. The church is taken away. The earth instantly ripens for the Antichrist. Chaos ensues. People begin looking for their loved ones. The tombs have opened. The top sergeants, the good ones who were born again have gone. A plane that had a pilot who was born again crashed. It will be such a tempest on the earth. The earth will be right instant for the Antichrist to come up and take charge. And when he comes up, he has been called by the dragon. Now he has the, anti the dragon, the Antichrist, the false prophet. And the Lord, if you read the Bible, gives them a leeway. He allows them to exercise their jurisdiction at that time. And so, the beast I saw this past night the false prophet, in the presence of the beast that came from the sea, the Antichrist, he now begins to execute his mission to lead the people of the earth to be able to worship the beast that came from the sea, the beast that had the fatal wound on the head and died and resurrected. And worship the dragon. Remember, the purpose is to worship the dragon. And this beast I saw yesterday at night, the beast that is the false prophet, cannot execute his authority without the beast that came from the sea, the Antichrist. But you see also that the beast that the Lord showed me yesterday, the beast that is now the false prophet, counterfeits the man of God that speaks with you today.
today. He counterfeits the mightiest prophet of the Lord that speaks with you right now. Because he is given some powers by the dragon, some demonic powers. He can call fire from heaven down, from the heavens. He does such wonders. And that is in counterfeit to he that speaks with you. Because you know that only he that speaks with you calls fire from heaven, the fire of Elijah. Those of you in Lelengai Nakuru, you saw how he called the fire down. And the fire came and stood at the altar here. And the other fire touched down there. And he begins to do things. But I said that in the process of him setting up the image of the beast that came from the sea to be worshipped, and to worship also the dragon, then and the blasphemy involved, then the Lord causes me. That's why these visions are taking place. He's charging me. He's setting me up against the beast. Why? Because at that time, he will cause me to clash with them because of the blasphemy. Blasphemy means disreputation. To put the Lord to disrepute, it means a defamation. To defame from God Jehovah. And that's why they try to change the worship in the house. And the Lord causes me to clash with them. That is the meaning of these constant dreams. Present the beast, cause me to clash. Present the beast, cause me to clash. Meaning, you are soon going to clash with them. I'm going to set you up to strike them for the blasphemy and everything, to challenge them, not to let them get away with it. And that's why you see all the crashing of the neutron stars, the shaking of the universe, the aspects you see, all these things you see, the, 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 the calling of rain from heaven, the shutting down of the heaven, and all these you see. That is a practice, practicing for the execution of that equivalent enormous power in that whole theater in the great tribulation, when that power will be necessary. When the enormity of such power that can shake the universe will eventually be very necessary to clash with these actors, the principles in the great tribulation. And that's why I say it. For now, the church needs to take you from this. Avoid this. The teeth are white and long teeth. And yet, the Bible describes them as, look, leopard. They are total leopard. What I've seen, they are leopard. The Lord has presented severally to me. They are leopard. If you look at the skin, it's leopard. And they are four leopard heads. There's one lion head and other heads. And horns, and ten horns, and, and crowns, and several horns. So listen, beloved people. You see that the feet are those of a bear. The mouth of a lion, the mouth of leopard here, and the leopard. Those are four vicious, violent, bloody, ferocious, wild animals that are totally brutal. They are known. They are feared in the jungle. The bear is feared. The leopard is vicious and brutal and violent and bloody and feared. The lion is the king of the jungle. It is brutal and violent and feared even by all other animals that are vicious. So can you imagine the combination of those three bloody, violent, vicious, brutal, and wild without any law, without rule, without regard or consideration? Can you imagine a beast that encompasses, contains the viciousness, the brutality and the bloodiness of those three most vicious animals? That is the message the Lord is sending me to bring to you. He's saying, stay away from that. Stay away from that conflict. It will be so vicious. Leave that conflict to his servant that speaks with you now. Because he's been given authority of equivalent counter. To countermand them, counteract them, conflict with them and clash with them. And clash and strike the water. The people, may bl those who are remaining here, may drink blood. Turn things around, bring aspects unspeakable on the earth. So stay away from it. The message the church is very clear. Prepare the way the Messiah is coming. Don't become part of that war theater. That theater is unbelievable. I have seen it severally. It is tremendous. It's terrible. It's unbearable. And there is darkness that covers the earth at the same time. So, beloved people, prepare the way. Prepare
prepare your garment that you may be part of the troop, part of the hosts that now come with the fire when the Messiah comes to Jerusalem on the second coming. The heavenly host will say again, finally then, bright and clean. Revelation chapter 19, beginning now, verse 11 on. After verse 14, you see now the church that was taken in the rapture coming back. You stay here. And that should be a lesson for everybody. The lion, the leopard, the bear, a combination of that to bespeak the brutality, the viciousness, the bloodiness, the behaving of Christians, the way they will attack those that and worship Jesus. It should be a lesson enough for all people on the earth to receive Jesus and choose holiness and dress holy and pursue holiness and fast and be holy Christian, and enter the safety of heaven. It will be bad here. There will be no safety here. This is here about what the Bible got. When Jehovah Elohim, the Godhead, said in the book of Malachi, that the Lord shall send his servant to turn the heart of the children to the Father, the hearts of the nations to God the Father, Otherwise, or lest is us. That scripture has now been fulfilled in your hearing, in your eyes also. So prepare the way, beloved people. The voice of one calling out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Be holy. Make right your lives with the Lord. Make sure that now you are right standing with the Lord. Make straight the way in the wilderness. Bring down the mountains of immorality in your heart. Stand right with the Lord. Because the Messiah is coming. Shalom, shalom, toda, 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 raba.